Okay, good morning. Good morning. Yay, I know we're all excited to be here. Um, but thank you for coming to the second day of the Wikimedia Diversity Conference. Um, first, a housekeeping announcement. Um, if you are the owner of a black women's blazer and you left it here yesterday, please see Dominic. Um, and so without any further ado, let's go again and get started whenever you're ready. Why it's not saying hmm. Should I do anything? Oh, oh cool. Hi, right, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Alice Wang from uh, Wikimedia User Group China, but I'm currently living in Ohio, so I'm also helping the student club in the Ohio State. And I'm Kevin Peravi. I go by Super Hamster on Wikipedia. I'm also from Ohio. Uh, so the topic we're going to talk about today is the Wikipedia Asian Month and how we're supporting the how we support the small Wikipedia communities by the Asian Month. Okay, how, how do I supposed to use it? No. So uh, here uh, is, there are some numbers that uh, of our uh, Asian Month editors are. We have a total of 43 Wikipedia communities attend last year in November, and we have a total of uh, 1,096 Wikipedians. Uh, involved into the event, and uh, they create a total of 6,086 new articles, which uh, also has to be lar larger than 2.5 thousand or 3.5 thousand bytes. And uh, 23 Wikipedia projects out of 43 are actually have less than 10,000 articles. And we have also 13 Wikimedia affiliations involved, and we're able to uh, send postcard to 44 countries or regions in the world. Here's a map that uh, the countries or regions that we send in postcard to. And uh, here's a map that uh, the Wikimedia affiliation get involved into the Asian Month event. So why are we supporting diversity? So instead of thinking about like uh, Wikipedia should embrace embrace the cultural diversity because it's beautiful, it's good. I'm thinking about like what effect and benefit that can bring to the movement by supporting the diversity. First thing is a lot of Asian languages have large amount of native speakers, but the, the, their size of Wikipedia is pretty small, like uh, Indonesian, Javanese, Thai wiki, or some Indic language. They have a huge amount of uh, native speakers, but to them, Wikipedia is not a very good re resources because it's it's small. So we're actually losing those people uh, using Wikipedia. By improving the quality and quantity of uh, this Wikipedia, we can have more readers, more people get involved into the movement. And those those people are also the edit editor and the community in those small Wikipedias are mostly being ignored in the movement because they don't really get involved with the global community and they only have a few peoples, so they usually get ignored. And it's also helping us to understand them, understand their community, understand how different community works differently uh, by supporting them, by helping with them. So here are some languages, 23, that actually uh, has less than 10,000 articles. Uh, one of them that in the middle, the Avia, Wikipedia has about like only 2,000 articles, so it's pretty small. And the, 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 the most important thing we do is that we're sending postcards. So why are we sending postcards? The, the, the major reason is postcards is very cheap. It's probably the cheapest way that you can send physical souvenirs all over the world. Uh, in China, sending a postcard internationally costing three postcards costing $1. And in the US, it's probably $1.5. So it's very cheap. And uh, it has very high values of meanings for people who rarely get Wikimedia souvenirs. So if you're thinking about like uh, most people actually don't have a chance to attend any kind of local or international Wikimedia event. They don't really have a chance to get a souvenir from those events or buy a souvenir from Wikimedia store. It's very meaningful. Uh, I've heard uh, someone told me that in one of the Indic language that receiving a Wikimedia Asian Month postcard is a privilege in their community. And 
also we have in very strict criteria that also keeping our postcard meaningful. It's actually, I think it's very important because if you can get something very easier, it's just not that meaningful. That's, that's human nature. You only value something that it's, you need a making effort to get. So uh, here are some postcard we uh, sending. We, we actually have seven uh, countries or regions sending those postcards and uh, each week, Asian months attenders will receive a random postcard uh, from one of these countries. And uh, this photo is people is writing the address of the postcard and they're ready to get those set. So what kind of criteria we have? The articles in the Asian months should be at least 3.5 thousand bytes and around 300 words in length. And those 300 words has to be excluding info box tables, lists, reference, categories, uh, etc. So if you uh, understanding how Wikimedia movements work, how Wikipedia itself works, you know it's actually not very easy criteria. It's actually very hard to get. And you have to uh, write five of those articles to get a postcard. And the article also have to fulfill the article notability criteria and must have a decent reference and have to be not, not a list. And the article is it's about Asian country, but uh, except that like, your language speaking country. So for example, on Chinese Wikipedia, we'll have four regions using Chinese Wikipedia, mainland China, Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan. So on Chinese Wikipedia during Asian months, you cannot write an article about this. Otherwise, it's not really meaningful because we want to enhance our understanding to the Asian regions. But uh, although the Asian content is kind of like underrepresenting on the Wikipedia, but it's not really like a, on Chinese Wikipedia, it's not really underrepresenting the mainland China stuff, so that's the reason. So why we have strict criteria, as I previously mentioned, it's keep the postcard more meaningful and keep the event more meaningful, and also it's ensure the quality and the quantity, ensure ensure the quality of the articles when we pursue the quantity. So uh, here is something that I think that would make us successful: six thousand articles. Uh, the first thing is communications. It's actually the most important part. Uh, it's not very easy to communicate with 43, uh, 43 communities that use in different languages. So we are actually sending updates and guidance by mass message through Meta to all organize in a total of 10 times. So we, and uh, we some, some of those uh, updates are actually translated to Russian just because we have a few minority languages in Russia that the organized knows little English. And we also have uh, all kinds of discussion on the Facebook group that uh, and also can ask, answer the questions. So that's what one of the mass message updates looks like. It's not like a simple message that, hey, we are about to end, do you get ready? It it's actually contains full details like what you need to do step by step. And I try to cover all kinds of situations that you may face, that each, com each community may, 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 may face, and uh, how to get it solved. So uh, the another thing is outreach. We're using the central notice. Of course, it's very powerful. And we're also using the site notice when the central notice is not enabled. Because when we launch in the Asian months, we kind of like have some conflict with the harassment survey in that time. So we're using the site no notice in the beginning and using central notice after. And we have a Facebook event page. We ask all organizers uh, all over the world to invite in people who think they will get involved in the months to come to the Facebook event page and uh, know about the event. We also try to connect with other communities instead of waiting others to join. So we cannot just sit in there and put a page on Meta and say, hey, uh, do you want to join Asian Months? Do you want to uh, come being part of us? It's not going to work. We're actually going to particular Wikipedia. Uh, we have a bunch of organizers that they try to find those people who know active on some Wikipedians and ask them if they want to join and uh, tell, us, tell them what's the benefit to join, how easy to join, and all, all such kind of things to try to uh, get them involved. And also, there is no competing among different languages because we're having Wikipedia, like English Wikipedia, have three million articles and uh, very super active communities. And uh, other 
Wikipedia only have like 10 active members. So there is no competition, no pressure that uh, just making a few articles during the event is fine. The main point is we are not really going to pursuing the quantity in those small Wikipedians. It's just we need to have this set up. We need to build kind of branding and the kind of having the community team uh, being built so we can able to get more results, get, get, make, make more efforts in the coming years. And uh, another thing is rewarding system. Uh, as I talked previously, we're using postcards, which is a great reward. It's actually the idea coming back to 2013 when I do social media program in China through IEG. And well, sending postcards domestically in China is even cheaper. And uh, we also have thank you message for whoever's just signing up on the page and the band star who actually accomplished five articles. Well, you also get a postcard. And we have a title of Wikipedia Asian Ambassador, which is, does not really mean anything. It's just kind of like endorsed by a few affiliations. And we give like a digital certificate. It's a word to like uh, Wikipedians who created the most articles in one Wikipedia. Otherwise, everyone will just write five articles and stop. And that's just not really what, I, what we want. And we want some competitions inside the Wikipedians. For, for example, in English Wikipedia, we'll have uh, some people is competing up to 670 articles. And the, the most articles created by a single person, I think it's a Spanish Wikipedia or Russian Wikipedia, like a uh, hundred articles, something. Uh, you want to come? Hi, so I'm Kevin. I was one of, I think, the four or five organizers of Wikipedia Asian Month on the English Wikipedia. So I'm just gonna add some final notes. Um, another thing that made us successful was the assistance we provided to organizers. So as we discussed, this um, project was implemented on many different language versions of Wikipedia, and it's difficult to kind of bring them all together. So one thing we had was a well-designed page, and this page was a very simple page that explained the project, was a place for users to submit their um, submissions. But the nice thing about it was we made it simple for other Wikipedias to copy this page over to their own wiki to kind of just quickly get it up and running. So not much work on their behalf. And we also had many templates created. For example, we had a barn star and several user boxes that users across different Wikipedias could use. And the key difference is that every Wikipedia basically just has to translate it. And you just take these pre-made items and you just have to translate them. And we also provided full detailed guidance, as you saw from those 10 messages we sent out to all organizers. We provided details on how to set up the um, project, how to um, facilitate it, all of that. And we also provided a clear way for organizers to ask questions and get answers quickly. Um, instead of having the question and answer on Wikipedia, we had it on Meta, which is a like, central hub for all Wikimedians. This allowed a way for Wikipedians from all the dozens of different Wikipedia projects to come to this central location to discuss it. And it was also nice because you can have people from Spanish and English and Russian coming to Meta and seeing all the questions from people on other Wikipedia projects. So it was just a kind of nice way to get everyone together discussing this. We had a question and answer page for both organizers and participants. So every Wikipedia on the project talk page, it was open for users to ask questions. Um, some of the questions were like, would this article qualify for this specific Asian country? For example, if you have a guy that was born in China, but then moved to America and um, made some notable successful things there, would he count as an American subject or an Asian subject? So we'd answer questions like that, along with questions regarding like um, clarifications about how to become an ambassador or get a postcard, things like that. And we also had a special tool that was designed for the event. Can you switch that in? Hmm? Right button. Oh, I see. Gotcha. So we had a tool developed by Indonesian Wikipedian Kenrick. He does a lot of cool development stuff. Um, and this tool was for judges or organizers. So what happened on every Wikipedia project is people would submit their articles on this page. And judges would go through all these articles and um, assess them. 
Now, the difficulty of this is, especially when you have users submitting 100 plus articles, that's a lot of articles to go through. So this tool allowed a way for judges to easily pull the articles that users are submitting. And this tool would automatically generate the bite size, the word count of these articles, and it just kind of made it easier to um, judge the articles regarding the statistics. Now, we still have to read the articles to see if the references were good, if um, the article was clear and met the other requirements. But the key part was this interface provided an easy way for organizers to judge articles that are qualified. And it provided a nice way to quickly generate the metrics we needed. And a nice thing about the tool is that it works um, for many other events. For example, this upcoming spring, the Central and Eastern Europeans are hosting a kind of similar event where they are having their countries, each country basically chooses 10 to 20 articles they want to see improved, and then the other Central and Eastern European countries will improve the articles from other wikis. So it's kind of the same thing, kind of improving articles in your region about countries that you might not be familiar with, and they'd be able to use this tool for their event too. But the other thing we want to do is expand this tool to work for participants and organizers. So instead of having participants submit their articles on Wikipedia and then having the judges use their tool and put all the info back on Wikipedia, we want a tool where um, participants can like log in and submit their articles through this tool and the judges will rate the articles and provide feedback all through this tool. So it's a nice central way, much like the Wiki Education dashboard we saw earlier. And it would also provide a nice way to have users see their um, progress so far, how many articles they submitted, how many words they've written, how many references they've added, to kind of give that motivational boost that really encourages people to continue contributing. And if anyone's interested, if you're into development, um, we can always use help improving it. It's coded in PHP, and it's open source on GitHub. So ways to get involved with this project is just write articles for the event. Um, upcoming one is in November, I think, right? Um, hosting local events. So let's say you want to have a little like local edit-a-thon for people to come together and improve articles related to Asia. Um, rapid grants are now available from the foundation, which means you can get up to $2,000 for hosting an edit-a-thon or any other event in a pretty short amount of time. And if you do work on other language wikis, um, you can also help organize the WAM event there. Um, they might already have a Wikipedia Asian Month um, planned, but many of these have one or two judges. They can always use more organizers, more judges. And if they um, are lacking organizers or if it hasn't been started, you can always take an initiative and set it up. And like we said, it's pretty easy to do with the um, templates and stuff that we provide. Yeah, so that's that. Um, any questions? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. And, yeah? Um, for the, the judging tool, um, how ambitious do you want it to be? Like, do you want it to work towards the point where different types of point systems are included in it, or different types of strategies for comparing articles and rating them? Uh, the most uh, usage of the tool is going to be the Asian Month event. So, we will want we want to the tour can as much as fit the our like uh, requirements uh, plan like strategy of the events. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Something cool I think too would be if it was like configurable. So to become an ambassador, not ambassador, um, to get a postcard, we require like the five articles. But having it configurable to be like, oh well, for this event we want to require ten articles. So having those simple configuration settings would be kind of cool. But um, yeah. is that something? I think Kendrick is. Yeah, the, the, so, so the developer is uh, working on the tour, and it's just like uh, we have the tour here, and if you want to use it for your event, we can configure in some stuff like fit your event, but it's just like uh, what it looks like because that's basically designed for the Asian months. Right. I was just talking to me afterwards. Okay, yes, sure. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I love the, the reward and incentive system that you guys have developed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we forget how much meaning people attach to tangible yeah. things. Um, but I want to ask about that. Like, you talk a lot about metrics and the tool. Do you have any, have you guys had any um, metrics or developed to 
measure the effectiveness of the rewards that you use? So how do, do we, how, how the effective like sending postcard is? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, be, because become an Asian ambassador, you, you will get additional postcard and people will just competing for them like for 60, 70 articles. Oh, so you didn't even measure, you're just seeing it happen. Yeah, I just seeing it happen, yeah. Yeah, and we get the feedback too from like that one particular user. Um, it would be cool if we did maybe like a post survey or something to get ideas about the postcards. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. And a nice thing about the postcards too, they uh, feature like images that were key to that region. So like the affiliates in a particular country would choose like the image or images they think really represent their country. So it's meaningful in that way too. Yeah, I saw lots of people like kind of showing off their postcard they received. They post photos on Facebook saying, hey, that's the like it's to, to them it's like certificate they, they, they kind of like talking to their family's friend that I'm working on Wikipedia like for a couple of years and uh, their families and friends doesn't really see anything it's just like really but <laughs> there's like what <laughs> but but it's like one time you you actually post a postcard that maybe you're from uh, like a like a far away country in Europe or Africa and you just post a photo of like postcard sending from Thailand and you you can to tell everyone that I'm working for Wikipedia, I'm volunteer for Wikipedia and that's what I get. I get some postcards sending from other communities and it's also like a good outreach, outreach ways and people will see like how the movement working even they just seeing people to kind of showing off the postcard. So that's kind of like not just affect the people that who received postcard but also affect the people who are around those people who received postcard. Yeah. Out there among people who are in the magazine. Mm -hmm. I, I'm also thrilled about the postcard concept because it's such a low cost for such a high value, yeah. warm fuzzy. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we've been doing is getting people to put something on their refrigerator so they keep seeing it. Yeah. You should go edit Wikipedia. Here's, here's your postcard <laughs> to remind you. So yeah, so I guess the most important thing is not just postcard itself, it's the criteria that we made for the postcard. If everyone can receive a postcard, that does not really meaningful. If you can receive a postcard like a, like a 10 postcards every year from all kinds of event or what, what something like that by making little effort, that also makes it not that meaningful as its physical meaning is. Yeah. Um, I, and I know the education programs in Europe, the smaller ones, are mm -hmm. giving students like completion certificates. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very tangible. Yeah, so I see the, 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 the digital, it's even digital certificate that we give for the Asian ambassadors. It's very like a powerful and meaningful for people. Like they, they, they just want to get it, you know. It's, it's, it's like such ways that endorse their uh, efforts, like being Wikipedians for so many years that, you know, kind of being loneliness and suddenly you get a chance to prove yourself that you know, Asian ambassador, something like that. And we, we kind of like make, make a little bit fancy certificate that kind of have all the affiliations that organizing the uh, Asian months get it signed and uh, logos there, kind, kind of official. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. So is there any like thoughts, comments on the event as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we plan well. We we are planning for the 2016. So the major change is we want to get more u new users. So last time we actually focusing on the user that we call in the middle of the curve. That it's uh, people who not really like a super editor contributing uh, millions of edits or like new editors, which both of them get more attentions. But people in the middle is not. So, but. But uh, upcoming years, we want to get more new users involved, especially we are supporting the uh, smaller communities and they wish to have uh, the event get more users for them. So we'll have like a pre-event before the Asian months. So we'll have like a uh, 15 days uh, challenge for new, only, only for new users and uh, to ask them to accomplish some basic edits that can kind of familiar with how editing Wikipedia feels like, how that experience feels like. It's also, we have some, postcards left, so I want to send them out rather than just <laughs> accidentally send one person 
same card twice. <laughs> so kind of like, you know, saving those postcards. Yeah, and uh, we, we wish get to get more uh, community involved. We, we actually uh, collaborate with uh, Richard with Guggenheim that will have more offline activities. So uh, kind of like helping, also helping the new users or people who are just starting adding Wikipedia to familiar with the uh, editing experience, especially our uh, rules is kind of like strict. And uh, as I observed last year, it's actually very little bit hard to uh, for new users especially uh, to get get some resort. So yeah. Yeah. Pardon me. What you mean, email marketing? Like a Uh, I don't think Wikipedia does. <laughs> there, there's been some experiments yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting point, yeah. Yep. You know, in the library world, we call that SDI, Selective Dissemination of Information. Mm -hmm. And people generally uh, identify <coughs> areas of interest in them, and then they get tagged. So mm -hmm. an article would go automatically if it falls within a particular subject area or merit subject area. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, we should, I think Wikipedia should do that, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, good morning everybody. Um, my name's Jim Hayes, I'm a member of Wikimedia DC, uh, and I wanted to talk to you uh, about Idea Lab and give you an example of an idea that uh, I've put in for this year. And if you're interested and have ideas of your own, uh, please come to the workshop and we'll workshop them and submit them. So um, uh, the idea of the thing about Idea Lab being at Meta is it's a way of interacting with the foundation and trying to go beyond the brainstorming stage and get to the kind of implementation stage for the problems we have. So um, last year, I don't know if you missed it, there was a big librarian conference and they had some talk about like getting librarians more engaged with Wikipedia. Uh, and I'm all into that. I like to try and do edit-a-thons, interact with them, and bring some librarian ethos into Wikipedia. But then there's some kind of pushback about our cultural buzzsaw. So the, that, to me, that was validation that we definitely have a civility problem and a wide perception of a civility problem among librarians. So um, my next slide has a little language thing, but I, hopefully you're, you know, desensitized or, you know, I'm, I'm bringing the, the uh, discourse down a little here, but this is an old blog post, and uh, I'm kind of going to concentrate on this talk on the first bullet, but 
Uh, this is an old blog post, so we know the answer. We, ha we have a problem. We have the solution to the problem. It's just we're disinclined to solve the problem because it's a drama and too much heartburn and things like that. So I'm looking for solutions among the bottom list items, and then um, I'm, I'm going to talk in mind about how we can just bootstrap the uh, solutions to the first one. And yeah, Anil Dash. So I have, I have links on this talk that are on the Commons, so you can link through to the original blog post. OK, so we know what the solutions are. And for me, one of them is the welcome wagon at WikiHow. So WikiHow, I don't know if you're familiar with them. They show up at Wikimania every year. They use the Wiki software. And they don't have a civility problem. Funny about that. So how do they do that? Well, they, some of their experienced users are welcomers. And they have stipends to pay for their welcomers. So to me, um, I'm, I just like reinventing the wheel. So my idea is, hey, let's take that and try and start off with some um, Wikipedians and get them to do that. OK, so um, Idea Lab. So to me, Idea Lab is the place to try and take that I wiki how idea and maybe shop it around and get some volunteers. So. You know, some people say that, you know, they've given up on the foundation, they've given up on the community, they're keeping their head down. And to me, uh, Idea Lab is a way to try and re-engage and try and float some ideas and get some buy-in. So, uh, you know, when we have world-class leaders at the foundation, we have to engage with them and use the tools that they give us. So, you know, for me, it's kind of like winning one for SECO. Uh, so what is this Inspire campaign? Uh, so here's, when you go to Meta, this is, this is the current land, kind of landing page. So to me, the, the thing here is, you know, share your idea, that's fine. We like to brine, you know, brainstorm and whine and complain, and that's fine. But the idea is to get beyond the, the, just the brainstorming, and let's build an action plan and then try and build teams. So the idea is on Meta, let's try and find like-minded individuals. I mean, it's us in the room, but you know, maybe we can find some other people on, on Wikipedia that we can build on, you know. Uh, I'm afraid it's uh, kind of us in the room that's gonna have to solve this problem. Okay, so my idea, skipping to my idea now, which is train ambassadors. So I stole the nomenclature from, you know, Education Foundation of Ambassador, but the idea there is that uh, you could say mentoring or, you know, helping out newbies or whatever you want to call it. But how do we build a, a, a cadre of experienced Wikipedians that will respond, you know, and, and not wait for stuff to happen and then kind of try and fix problems. So, but let's try and be more proactive. And, and so building circles of civility. So the idea there is that you know, even if the rest of the wiki is kind of being, you know, uncivil and kind of toxic, we can have our own little circles and get some work done within our own subgroup. And Women in Red is a good example of that because, you know, they're organizing off wiki, they're getting stuff done, um, even, even as other, th other problems are unsolved. Okay, so... Um, so the, skipping back to problem assessment. Um, so I see uh, a lot of wiki processes currently are broken. B why? Because, oh, we we good at job queuing and making lists and making backlogs, but we're not very good at maybe building a team to clear the backlog. So this is how both of these happen, which is, you know, we made this AFC process, which is jargon for, sorry for your non-Wikipedians, that all new articles go there, and then they go to there to die. So, you know, as um, as Andrew Lee was saying, you know, we advise new users never go to AFC, right? Because, you know, I've seen positive outcomes, but the percentage is so small that it's we might as well just uh, personally intervene and pull stuff back from the process and then publish them on our own. And news page patrollers, I'm afraid I've had, uh, you know, uh, it's kind of not very helpful because I'll find that they'll drive by and maybe tag an article, but they won't really actually improve articles or help articles. So, however, 
what's nice here is that these processes give us a job queue. So if we train our ambassadors, this is where they go to find things and new users to go uh, mentor. Okay, um, so about what would we train them about? Well, the idea is we're going to just collaborate. We're going to patrol the new editor activity at AFC and at, at the new page patrollers are seeing. We can also use the new page feed, but that's a little um, like a fire hose. And then also customize help without templates. So uh, the standard behavior is we just template people's talk pages. Well, that's kind of not working. So let's think about reaching out with some authentic feedback and trying to elicit, you know, better behavior from the new editors. Um, and hopefully will improve the culture over time. Uh, one open question I have is, uh, should we train people to be unpaid and then maybe have some stipends for them or hopefully have full-time people doing this? Because at the WikiHow, uh, it's full-time, you know, it's people getting paid. Okay, and so um, existing tools. So um, what I like about my idea is I don't have to build any software. So I'm going to work on the existing tools here, Tea House. Uh, I like Tea House a lot. Um, it's an invitation model, and it has it's, it's flagged new users very well and sends them an invite. But my idea is to intervene directly on, with the user and not invite them through a forum. So um, however, a lot of we can interact and you know, uh, tell new users, hey, go to Tea House when you can't get me. Um, Wikilove, again, I like the concept. It tends to be underused. Again, we, as Wikipedia, Wikipedians tend to underestimate the power of positive reinforcement. And um, so this, this is a whole tool suite that the ambassadors could use. Uh, I really love the Wikipedia library with the hashtag. So to me, using the hashtag to track activity and the, the neato tools that they developed uh, is, again, another tool for the ambassadors to use. Uh, and then the bottom two kind of don't work, but um, we can use them, you know, they're, they're where we go to fix problems. So we can, um, so um, that tells us where to start. Don't go forward. Oh? What's the third one with the uh, hashtag address? Yeah, the Wikipedia library. So if you, if you go, uh, yeah, you have the fella in the room, you can go quiz him about it and twist his arm, but uh, there's a whole outreach page that that links to, and yeah, and uh, what was neat about it, okay, so I'll talk about uh, one library and one reference. So that happened last year. They had a big kind of global event, and then they had the librarians add references, and then in their edit, they would add, in the edit summary, they would put a hashtag, and then there was this neat tool that could uh, do metrics on the hashtag edit summaries. So that was pretty sl I, slick. I enjoyed that. Um, there was some downside from the community, kind of you know, saying, "Who are these librarians adding references everywhere? They must be vandals," you know, which you know, blows my mind. But that's to me, that's part. So to me, that's the metrics of how how would we do metrics on this since we don't have any software? Well, I, to me, that's my go-to. Okay, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, I I had I left it out. I'm in the middle about that. Um, again, if wiki projects to me are kind of becoming moribund, and so I'm I'm thinking about organizing off wiki. Again, if we if we wanted to kind of come in and take our ambassadors in there and get a critical mass on wiki project welcome. Uh, that would be a nice place on Wiki to get organized, but again, I'm thinking even out, off Wiki and just having a body of practice, do the, do the practice and worry less about where we're getting organized. But again, that's, yes, Wiki Project Welcome is there for us to maybe take and use. Um, it seems like a good name. Yes. Uh, and welcome, wagon, welcome. Yes, so um, that's, that's a good idea. I'll. I'll definitely change my proposal maybe because again the nice thing is we still have a window to revise proposals here and send them in so yeah okay let me uh, let me think about that some more 
Uh, again, I've had uh, some, seen some negative things with projects where the trolls come in and disrupt on wiki, on projects. So to me, I'm just thinking, just don't even bother, well, I, I which maybe I shouldn't. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right. So um, let's see. Let me just go ahead to references. So I have references here on my slide. And um, also I have a reading list. So if you want to, there's books written on this topic. It's not, you know, this is, we're not reinventing the wheel here. This, you know, it's just that the Wikipedians don't pay attention to management textbooks. So, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Any other questions? Or... Yep, John. Yeah. Yeah, so you uh, did mention DYK. And, uh, for, uh, I, I really like DYK because it's one of the only places on Wikipedia where you will you know, be given you know, a very clear view of things that need to be fixed and then right. be given a chance to actually fix it. There's nothing on DYK that uh, the contributor uh, uh, does it. They say it's uh, improvement. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so incorporating DYK into here, yeah, I tend to look at that as more of a article, um, article creation tool or, you know, promotion of new content, which is more of a, to me, that's more of an edit-a-thon thing. But, uh, yeah, if, you know, if we're counseling new users with new articles, yeah, the part, I guess part of my uh, coaching practice would be, you know, improving the new article uh, of of new editors so they can get that buzz, that positive feedback from the, the DIK gets you. Well, um, what does DIK stand for? Oh, I'm sorry, Do you, did you know? It's, so when you create a new article and it has a certain amount of content, you can put it in this job queue to did you know, and then it'll get on main page and it'll get more views. So typically, I tend not to do it myself with new articles because, you know, I'm I don't know, I guess I don't want people to look at my articles or something, but <laughs> some, <laughs> Some people do, so a lot of women in red does this. So for so there's certain experienced users that uh, are um, uh, well versed in the process, and so they'll shepherd the new folks along, and it gets it'll gets more visibility, new activity, and um, it gets more views to your articles too. And you plus you get a nice barn star kind of thing on your user page, so it's a nice badge on your user page too. Okay, yes. Yeah, Yeah. Their first proposal was to them. They were claiming to take articles to did you know, and they found it was like too much. I mean, they, yeah. they, you know what I'm saying? So I, I totally see that maybe it's a good idea, yeah. but staying narrowly focused right. on what you think you can really do. Yeah, so the, so yeah, I would, I, yes. Yeah, I would agree. Did you know, the process can be yeah. a little arcane for did you know, so. Uh, expecting a new person to do it is a little is a stretch. So yeah, if I guess the, if we had an ambassador mentor to kind of help out on that, I think that would be more successful. But again, a, a lot of past efforts have concentrated on did you know, and it didn't as you know it, it was harder. Okay. Yeah. Or, e or even good article process. So feature article, good article is good because it's an existing queue. The problem is if you overload them too much, they'll get cranky at right, you. Right. I just mean in general, if we're thinking about like, you know, how to change the interaction, maybe don't send people to DYK, but ask ourselves, like, what is it about that that when it works makes it work? Right. Um, and if we had an experienced user, could we, like, facilitate the process and make it much easier? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Rosa. Yeah.
I, yep. I do agree that BYK is not like real geared towards like real human beings on Earth. It's kind of like a second step on the ladder and like right. teacher to teacher to teacher. Right. right. Okay, so Rosie, yeah. Yeah, maybe we need to ask because you know there's some of us who are pretty enthused about it, even though sometimes it can be kind of a rough place to yeah. navigate if you're if you're new to so maybe don't nominate and just watch. Yeah, maybe we need to give a barn star that person that nominated your article, Rosie. <laughs> yeah, so they yeah, little seeds bring uh, large yes. uh, that's right. That's okay. three and a half weeks yeah. oh, Yes. Please um, Well, again, I would... If we, you know, if we take Rosie's approach, which I love, of, like, going through the nomination, like, having a mentor take the article through the nomination process for them, you know, that's great. Or maybe we could do something about PYK to make it streamline it a little bit more. Yeah. But it is a sh that space, like, that is... Yeah, I, I, I agree. It's, it's a shame the process is less newbie-friendly. I would just say, you know, we, we have the uh, idea lab is a place to maybe fix process. So if you had process improvement ideas or train, you know, D DYK helpers or something, that would, you know, this uh, idea lab is a place to try and fix process if you, you know, if, if we all agree the process doesn't work so well. Well, it, it, oh, the wiki love is like that, except it's less automated. It's one on one. It's one by one. But yeah, you know, we have, yeah. So she's talking about Dragon software and how easy it is to welcome people there. So, yeah. So, it's very yeah. And also, yeah. So I would say, yeah. Could we develop some software to semi-automate wiki love, perhaps? Or you buy the software. Right. 
Right. Yeah. Well, or spend some development time, yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's offline, or it's different than Wiki. But we can, if it's a feature that you know we could do on Wiki, it's just that we'd rather semi-automate deletion than semi-automate Wiki love. You know, so that's yeah, kind of. Yep. Yeah, play uh, a little. I've seen it. I haven't really yeah. well, played with it. If it's another thing that you could do for other people, you know, it's a yeah. big, like if you think editors like Edmonton, they, you know, want to use articles like Edmonton, they may not be aware of the fact that you could make a playlist to show, feature, reader what's happening at those things, and they right. can't. So it is really easy to do this and show right. the accomplishments of people and what they've done. Okay, yeah, so that's a comment about uh, Education Foundation tool about playlist about at, at for edit a thon so you can show activity that occurs at edit a thons. Yep. If you have a list of users, right? So uh, it's right. Or, or really anything, you know. Yep. Um, a couple of comments. The, the thing that we're seeing down below that's capturing all of our content is yep. called cart okay. and is a human being, hello, who is listening to us and typing what we're saying and making a transcript as we go. So, so cart is a human thing. being taking yeah, it's not yeah, software. It's, and I'm afraid it says indecipher, you know, unheardable for your comment, yeah. So it's thank you. Which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what the, I had a couple of questions. One was um, I did more, I've done more edit work for WikiHow, and their user interface is so much more welcoming. It's more visual, right. it gives you the level one kind of things. Right. Like, I, it, it's so simple for us to partner more with them in my mind. Right. Yeah, and again, I mention them because to me that's a lost opportunity there in that I think they have the solution to this problem that we're kind of all in consensus about. It's just that I don't know if we don't, we lack the, you know, the resolution to go over there and partner or team or whatever, so. I, I have been surprised by how much there's silos. The other question I have is, uh, are you familiar with Fever Me, which is a tool for Either building Oh, either B, no, I'm Fever sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so uh, more research to do. I maybe I'll append that to the to the end there, or we can add it to the talk. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, small ones. I, maybe I was expecting too much from your talk. Oh, sorry. Oh, which one? Oh, yes, right. Yeah, so. Uh, that's a huge problem. Yeah. That is a choice that you've made. Yeah. And see, I, I kind of agree with this wholeheartedly. And to me, it's an old blog post, so we all know it. We all kind of agree. And so it's kind of up to us, right? Right. Um, right. Well, yeah, as usual, I picked a little tiny sliver and said, yeah, I'll do a little piece of the problem. But, you know, if we want to idea lab everything, you know, do, you know, dash point number one, dash point number two, we can do that too, you know. Yeah, it's just you have to build the team to go implement your plan then. And, yeah, it, we're, I'm going to have a workshop. So if you want to you want to bring ten ideas, let's go workshop them, and then we'll go fly and buy uh, on Meta and see if anybody jump. you know. I think there's a broad consensus we need to do something. It's just we're lacking in the either the roadmap of how to get there because we see all the roadblocks, or the team. We haven't built a team because we're all our own individual editors, and so we're we're lacking in the kind of uh, connections in order to kind of and see again what by using Idea Lab you're building from the ground up. You're not saying, "Oh, Foundation, please come and save us," which you know would work, but it's not so. <laughs> okay, I guess uh, I'm uh, just here uh, trying to uh, push your. Uh, oh, okay. Your uh, what do you call it? The workshop. Yes. Uh, I'm just thinking there must be something like uh, comprehensive salvage, and I would like to. I mean, you've given us a nice. Yeah. Um, well, 
their their current proposals over there now about you know code of conduct and some other things. So you know that's the to me if we're going to talk solutions and work solutions, that's to me I'm saying hey let's go there and go work on Meta and get some solutions going. You know. So, anything else or. You can see me afterwards. There's a break, so chat later. Thank you.
Does anybody know what time it is? Say again. Ten after. Ten after. You think I should start? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, my name is Sydney Poor, and I'm going to do a talk on um, using Wikimedia Foundation grants to address the, the gender gap. But really, what I'm talking about could be used, um, the tips could be used to really get a grant for anything that's related to diversity or harassment. I'm using the same type information. Um, but I focused on the gender gap because we have, um, in recent times, had a focus on some of our campaigns on the gender gap. So I have some pretty good examples to give for that topic. So I mean, if somebody is here and they're mostly interested in something besides the gender gap, I do apologize for that because I really like to be inclusive. And I certainly don't mean to be um, you know, putting you off. And I'd be very happy to individually talk with you about your ideas. So don't feel like if it's not the gender gap that you're not welcome to um, present your ideas forward you know, based on my information. Um, I have a little, you know, just a little bit of background information about myself. Um, I have uh, worked on several different grant committees from the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, these are volunteer committees that review grants. And um, from that, I've, I've gotten some experience and kind of understanding what um, the grant committees are looking for whenever people are putting grants in. And for the first time, I applied for an, an individual engagement grant myself, and I just found out um, yesterday evening late that I actually had been awarded a grant. So, yeah. So, um, so I feel like you know I'm very fresh off doing this, and so it's I really want to share what I've learned as I've gone through the process. Um, the problem with the gender gap was is that we know, and this is all you know, recapping here for you all. We know that less than 20% of the Wiki, um, Wikipedia editors are women, and that the gaps are both in content um, as well as in there being bias in articles. Um, and we also had a problem that less than 30% of the grants were being led by women. This was in 2014. And that less than 9% of the Wikimedia Foundation's funding was being spent on the gender gap. That was in 2014. So it was seen and recognized by people both inside um, the movement and outside the movement that we, ha we had a real problem and that because we really weren't putting any money toward it, towards the issue, it didn't seem like we were taking the problem very seriously. Because you've got to really think about the fact how you're spending your money really reflects your values. So it didn't seem like we really valued fixing this problem. So there was a group of people that were women as well as some, um, I must say, very strong-willed women who worked inside the Wikimedia Foundation who decided they wanted to change that. Um, so people came up with various solutions. And there was a campaign called the Inspire Campaign, which uh, was what I consider a collective solution. It was a group of people coming together to come up with ideas. And something similar to that I would put in, in, the, in that ballpark of art, art plus feminism. That was also a very collective campaign where lots of people are working on something kind of at the same time. So that, that was seen as potential solutions um, to, you know, to come together to work on something. Um, the Inspire campaign was uh, launched in uh, March of 2014 and it, it actually had quite a bit of controversy around it. Um, the, there was not adequate staffing at Wikimedia Foundation Grants Department to carry on with their regular grant programs and also do the Inspire campaign for the gender gap. But the very strong-willed people working in that department decided they were gonna go ahead and do it anyway. So they more or less shut down some of the um, other grant programs for a period of three months and essentially said we're only going to be taking grant requests um, if, it's, if it's something that's very time sensitive. Just for general projects, we're going to have, ask you to wait because we're going to make this be a priority. And um, they put it forward. And there was a huge amount of outcry in, in the Wikimedia community. And they could have backed down and stopped, but they didn't. And they went forward with it. And for that, I do think that the Wikimedia Foundation staff in the Grants Department deserves a lot of credit because they took a lot of flack over that. So I've been very curious to see what would come from actually doing this. Um, 
what was on the table was about $250,000 worth of ideas to support gender diversity in both content and contributors. Um, really, um, a record number of ideas were submitted. Um, there was um, 267 ideas were created. There were 631 participants. Many of the participants were, were participating to be very negative about what was happening at the time. Um, and simultaneous with introducing uh, the Inspire campaign was the introduction of the friendly space policy um, into the grants program space. So there was expectation there that you could not come and be rude and um, say things that would be hurtful or mean or harassing to people that were trying to, to work on the campaign. So, um, so no one really anticipated the level of neg negativity and the amount of work that would have to go into monitoring it. Um, it was unbelievably negative, but you know everyone persevered through it, and we were able to go ahead and get uh, 41 good proposals uh, moved from ideas um, into I, what I would consider a proposal that was like fund worthy. You know, maybe it didn't end up getting funded, but it was something that was like could could have been considered. And from that, we had uh, 16 grants awarded, and 88 percent of those were led by women, um, and 81 percent of those were, were new grantees. And I think the last two points are just really um, important, and particularly the last one that talks about 81 percent new grantees, because essentially we had people that were actually new to our movement were coming in for the first time and getting funding. And so um, in order for us to change the demographics of our movement, we're going to have to be willing to have new people come in and get grant money. Because if we have the same old people coming in and getting grant money, and we're not really going to be probably getting the ideas we need to, to really change our movement the way it needs to be changed. Um, this is a kind of a graph of the, of the ideas and the participation that took place. So it started off, um, you know, with kind of a bang, and it, it just kept growing as the time went by. And it, it was a month long where you, where you could contribute your ideas. Um, these are the, uh, the list of the 16 grants that were proposed. It was really a whole different, a whole uh, group, group of ideas. Um, Many of them were based in the United States, but there were really ideas that were from all over the world um, that, that you know, were carried for, forward. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk about a few of them um, just for the purpose of illustrating the types of things and kind of, kind of jump-starting ideas that you may have and how you could go forward. Um, the art and feminism uh, did not really start out initially as a um, uh, Inspire grant. Um, so I kind of got my slides a little bit out of order, but they, um, it did start out as an individual engagement grant going through the idea live process in a similar way. And what it was, it, this funded of uh, the infrastructure and training materials and support um, uh, for ambassadors and participants. And what is really important, I think, when you think about uh, doing something big like this was a campaign, was that it, it does take money and support of uh, training materials being developed, paying people for their time to project manage the, an idea for something to really be, be big and successful. Now, the art plus feminism has grown over like three years' time, um, but it started off realizing right off the bat that it was going to need training materials and this type of stuff and asked for money to do that. And um, they came back and asked for more money. I mean, they started off as an individual engagement grant and then you know, as things developed and they realized they needed more things, they came back and asked for a project and event grant. So I think that like this kind of shows that you can't totally anticipate up front exactly what you're going to need, but you shouldn't let a project fail that's a good idea and seems to be working just because you don't exactly have the funding or your idea wasn't fully baked to start with. Go back ask for more money, communicate with the grants department, and they will work with you to try to have the money you need to be successful. Because um, if you, it doesn't really make sense for something to be going pretty well, but you just misjudge something and for the whole project to fail. That isn't really you know, serving anybody's purpose well. So you just need to be able to communicate with them and let them know 
what more you need and be you know very specific about it and work with them to see if there's a way that you can get the, what you need to make the, the project be successful. Um, one of the projects that did come from the individual, um, I mean, from the Inspire campaign was the uh, was the um, Wikipedia, West Virginia University Wikipedia in Residence for Gender Equity that uh, Kelly spoke about. I don't know if Kelly is in, in here right now or not. But um, she spoke about her program yesterday, and I wanted to give a little bit of, of describing kind of my perspective from someone who was on the committee evaluating the grants that were coming in and kind of that situation and why I think it's just so important that that um, grant got funded. Um, the people that were involved in submitting that grant from WVU had no prior experience at all editing Wikipedia. And so this right off the bat would be a major negative where a, a, they would not get any funding. And if it had not probably been for the special campaign, they would not have gotten any funding. But there was extremely so strong support from the university administrators. I mean, they wrote to everybody and their brother. I mean, they just wrote to people at the foundation. They, they reached, you know, they reached out to volunteers. I mean, they really let it be known that they really wanted to do something to address the gender gap, and they were highly motivated, and that the library, um, you know, uh, department was just really wanted to jump over this, and they wanted to really take it on. Um, so because of that strong support, there were volunteer advisors and mentors that came forward that were willing to help them. And I was one of those people, and I literally, you know, helped somebody who had never made an edit at all on Wikipedia or Meta or anyone else fill out the application proposal form um, based on her ideas and talking it through to putting it on there. And we had other volunteers, some of which were... Um, paid staff at Wikimedia Foundation that were kind of doing this more as a volunteer than paid staff that came forward and also mentored them through this process to help it be a successful application. And I really feel like that we really are probably going to need that level of support um, for new people coming into our community in order for us to get the new ideas that we really need. So one of my goals is for at some point in time for us to get in a mentoring program, maybe even a, a uh, you know, some type of grants uh, support user group or something that would help people um, where we could get some funding to actually help this be accomplished, to help people learn how to write grants um, and to kind of walk them through the process and to be their advisors and mentors as they go through the process. Because I, I personally don't have the capacity to help a lot of people do this, and I, but I saw how successful it was whenever people did, could come forward and, and help someone through this process. Another one of the projects that has uh, been kind of talked about several different times at this um, uh, conference this weekend is um, the Gender Gap Ally Skills Training. Um, it was a pilot that was uh, funded with $9,000 to Ada Initiative. And they ran it last year at Wikimania. So it's been a full year since it was run, and really nothing has come from it after that uh, program was developed. And I personally feel like this is something that could be taken and, and go forward with it. I really encourage the people here that have been thinking about what we could do next to address a harassment um, or really just to help decrease the gender gap, make women feel more comfortable editing to look um, closer into this program and the successes of it, read the reports about it, and see it as a possible launching pad for something else that would come next, because it was intended to be a pilot project. So it seems like a waste to let that go, because I do think there are good learnings from that particular program. Uh, is anybody here, are, is, are people familiar with this at all? Did anyone here attend this? Yeah, so yeah, so, um, what it really, what, what the idea, what the ADA initiative is, it's, it was an organization that um, no longer exists anymore, sadly, but it was worked in the space of the open uh, community as well as working um, related to gender. And they long recognized that um, there was a lot of problems in, in the, you know, uh, tech industry, the women didn't feel welcome, and in fact, at the times they were harassed. And their organization existed solely to address that issue. And um, they had run several different camps, projects and Wik uh, Wikimanias, where women could go and learn about how to uh, be more successful working in the tech industry. 
And so they seemed like a really good ally to, for us to go to to ask them to work up this program. And they tailored it specifically as a training program either for administrators or for people that would be willing to kind of uh, monitor discussions that were happening in uh, talk pages in you know, Wikipedia. And um, it was, I felt like it was, it was something that was successful. It, it showed that you could you know, develop a training program um, and run it and at the end of it feel like that people could be, had l better skills about exactly what you can do to help someone else who, who may feel like they're uncomfortable and um, you know, have that ally come forward and do the work so the person doesn't feel like they're alone. So um, I would really recommend, uh, like I said, people looking into this further and potentially carrying this forward as an idea. The other thing that's, that was mentioned, I believe, by Rosie um, and maybe some other people is the, uh, the Wiki Gender Index. Um, there was $22,500 together automate, graph, and observe gender trends in Wikipedia biographies. And it's on a public website. And it has recently been updated. And I think this is a very concrete way for us to track and watch um, and compare different Wikipedias to each other, try to understand why some people are being successful, some people aren't. And I think this is, was a great idea. And I think that there's more ideas similar to this. One of the interesting things about this was that it was, it used both, it used tools development, but it also went to a different website. It didn't rely on the wiki, um, being on Wikipedia itself, um, it was it felt like it accomplished something better somewhere else, and I think this is something that you know was a learning experience from that. Um, so I think this is something that could be, um, and you know, and this is an idea that could really support the work of the gender gap. And I think there's other things that that could, could also be helpful to to really highlight the, the problems we have today and also the progress that we make. Um, I think that. Um, a lot of people in this room probably have heard of the Idea Lab, and we had a session on it earlier today. And really, the first step towards taking an idea, like whether it's something that comes from a campaign like the Inspire campaign, or something that's happening like right now with the Inspire, uh, you know, harassment campaign, or if it's just somebody that just wants a quicker grant, a smaller grant for Editathon. A lot of these things can start in the idea lab, where you, you go in the idea lab, um, you have a chance to write out your idea, what you like, um, what you want to do. It kind of walks you through the process. And um, if, if you, in fact, have an idea, but you don't think you're the best person to actually do it, then you can put the idea up, and then somebody else can come along later and develop the idea. And so it's worthwhile you going and looking through the ideas that are already there to see if somebody has already suggested something that you think is an idea. So you may be able to take their suggestions or their idea and develop it further. Um, so I would encourage people when they were trying to work on something to use the Idea Lab. I did that um, for, for my project, and I found it to be a little bit uh, challenging, I guess, like, like most things are uh, whenever you do them for the first time. But it was not something, I mean, if you, if you took the time and read the instructions, I felt like if you have some experience as a Wikipedian, you probably wouldn't have too much trouble. If you're brand new to editing, it would be a little bit more difficult. Um, but it's not impossible to do. I mean, it, I would, if it's new and different to you, I suggest taking the time to learn how to use it because I think it's worthwhile, worth your time to be able to, to work in that space. Now, one of the things that has happened is that the Wikimedia Foundation has completely changed their grants program. And it's, it's kind of mid-transition right now. It's actually almost to the end of the transition. Um, w one of the things that, it, that, that is going to be changing is that there are going to be what are called rapid um, grants. And, and the project and event grants are now going to be only project grants. and the individual engagement grants are being rolled into the project grants program. So th those are major changes that are taking place um, that are kind of underway right now and are, are being launched over the next really several weeks com to complete the process. The annual plan, um, annual plan grants, I'm not going to really talk about as much today because they really um, 
or for larger groups and probably don't apply quite as much to the people that are here, although um, that is not to say that if you are, have a chapter or a user group, one of these processes may be something that you may want to do, but it really is out of, out of what I can go into today. Um, and the other thing that it does apply is conference and travel support because there um, are definitely um, places we can go and people we can talk to using this money. Um, I'm going to give you a, just a quick recap of these because they are new and I want to make sure people understand like the changes so they can plan um, for them. The rapid um, grants is something new and so you're able to get a, a quicker, a quick decision. Um, all you have to do really basically agree to some very simple things, uh, you know, you have to agree to report on your, you know, program you did or your event. Um, and it's only up to a one year's time and you have to agree to the friendly space policy for your, the project and space you're working in. And you can get up to um, $2,000 worth of money. And this could be for a series of edit-a-thons, for example. If you're planning on um, going into a library and over the course of a, of a certain period of time doing this. Uh, or, you know, other smaller type of projects that you're working on that you'll be able to, like, write it up and get a relatively quick answer about what you want to do. Like, you suppose you're developing training materials as well or something along those lines. Um, project grants is probably one of the biggest changes that's taking place because people have known for quite a while about the project and event grants. Um, this is where you essentially would um, had a, it was open all the time. You could go there and put your idea up, and within uh, hopefully not too long a period of time, like weeks, you know, sometimes to a month, depending on what the idea was, um, you would get an answer about whether or not that your project or event was going to be funded. Um, this is being changed today, and. They're rolling in the um, idea, I mean, the um, individual engagement grants into the project grants, and there's really going to be two streams of those um, being managed simultaneously. One would be things you're doing, projects you're doing that are, um, you know, uh, new, something that would have been similar to the individual engagement grants that were, that were experimental in nature, or tried and true ideas can also will be evaluated there. The, the big difference is they're only going to be evaluated quarterly. So previously individual engagement grants, it was announced twice a year, the call went out, people wrote them down and they selected a small number of usually of people to get those grants and the project and event grants was opened up all the time. So they've merged the two together and now you'll be able to go ask for up to $100,000 uh, quarterly this is when you'll be able to su submit your your proposals for that so it's going to take some planning ahead if you want to do a larger project and get it started so I really encourage people to take this into consideration um, if things are time sensitive you really need to think about your calendar and man managing that um, a little bit more carefully than maybe you did in the past um, there is a minimum budget of this for um, to um, for uh, $2,000 because anything less than that could go into the rapid grants. And this uh, is gonna be launched uh, July 1st is whenever the applications will be taken for those for the first time. Um, the other type of grant that I think is important um, for us is the travel and participation support funds. Um, if there is a conference that you feel like that you sh should be able to go to um, to represent Wikimedia Foundation at that conference, suppose it's a conference of, um, I don't know, a sociology association and their, you know, focus for this year is gender and you feel like, oh, it would be awesome, great if we could go there and do an edit-a-thon and present and so this is an example of how you can put in, ask for money to travel to go to this and it's, it's pretty simple and lightweight. Um, you just have to apply for the funding up uh, in advance and then go do your thing and come back and write a report about what you're doing. And um, so, you know, obviously there is not unlimited money and they really like to see some, you know, pretty close connection to like what you think you're going to get out of it, you know, what the target um, audience would be, what wiki was going to benefit from the travel and that kind of stuff. But I do think it's something that we could utilize for the gender um, more. So um, 
I really would encourage people to write up your ideas, you know, that you've had while you're here today. You know, there's been a lot of discussion. A lot of people have been brainstorming. We've had specific sessions um, where we discussed ideas. Go ahead and write those up on the Idea Lab. Um, think about what type of grant might work for you. If you have questions about it, um, you could contact me. The Wikimedia Foundation staff is also very um, willing to speak with you. Um, and to give you an idea about, you know, how, you know, whether or not you're going in the right direction with the idea based on their experience from the committees that review grants, um, you know, what you would need to do, which grant a program would be appropriate. So I would really encourage, um, you know, to reach out to them as well if, if you have questions. So does anybody have any questions about the grants? Go ahead. Um, I'm not sure about that. I'm sorry. I know. I, I think it's similar to how it was before, like a, you know, a month or something like that. But the the, the the applications are available right now. He asked when the uh, when the decision would be made, and I'm sorry, I really didn't get that data. That isn't necessarily true. Okay. Um, but, but, and how do, how do you know how much a person, whose cost is going to be for something like a conference? What do you guys do for that kind of? Um, I think it's probably really individual based, based on um, the, where you're located and that kind of thing. You know, being a global movement, I mean, it's very different in Brazil and India than it's going to be in, um, you know, London, you know, in, or New York City. So I don't think there's a set amount like that. I think that they um, they would. That's the type of thing that would be really worthwhile. You calling them, and you know having a, that discussion with them to make sure you're on the same page about something like that. I would really encourage you to do that, so that you know you're not getting these. I mean, you could go out and get some estimates, and then go to them and ask them, does this sound reasonable to you? Well, I've got this estimates, and you know for the type of food we think would be appropriate to serve and this is what we're seeing, and does this sound like something that you all would support? So prior to you ever putting the grant in, that's the type of thing you can go ahead and do. Have those phone calls with them. The other question I had is, um, are you seeing anything, or are you expecting to see more organizations applying for grants instead of individuals and teams? Uh, well, and matching grants, is there any? There's no real matching grants. That doesn't exist in the, in the Wikimedia Foundation world. Um, I skipped over the annual plan grants, which are uh, the grants that are for um, chapters to apply, which is, you know, it, it, we have affiliates in the Wikimedia movement, which are typically chapters, thematic organizations, or user groups. There are a few exceptions to that, um, very, very few, that are kind of designated movement partners that also have gotten funding. I mean, we're, I think we're talking one of those exists. So, um, so those organizations, um, come and they put a, a full annual plan in and that they, you know, over the course of the next year, we're going to want this amount of money. And, you know, they ask for, I mean, the German chapter gets, you know, millions of dollars. Uh, they're a very large chapter. We have other chapters that get, you know, $30,000. You know, it's like, it really depends. So um, the user groups um, right now have just begun starting to move into the annual, simple annual plan process. And um, there are some challenges with that, but I would encourage us to continue to experiment with that. If you have a local group of people who are interested in working on something that has to do with diversity in your own little area, in your own city, or if um, I actually started today, um, and the process of starting a, a group called the, um, the Community Health User Group, because I really feel like here we've been talking a lot about it, and we're going to go home, and it would be probably really helpful if we had a user group where we could work on this together. So it's the type of thing, if we had a community health user group, we could go together in that group after we came up with an idea and ask for funding, you know. So uh, this is kind of the trend now is towards doing s small groups of people coming and being a little bit more organized about the way they put in their ideas and trying to come up with um, – more of a plan for what they're doing over the course of you know months or years it doesn't have to be real complicated but still some type of forward thinking about what they're going to do you know 
it's still fine for small groups, teams of people to say, oh, we want to have edit a thons and come ask for a few thousand dollars to do that. That's still great. But I'm talking about people who are, that are kind of strategizing and thinking, oh, we want to try to really address diversity. Like, what are we going to do over, over the next year to do this? And what kind of funding, what kind of, kind of capacity do we have? And to think that through and then come forward and put in a little bit more um, complete plan about what you want to do. So, so that's kind of, so that, that answers your question. Uh huh. Um, well, I mean, you, you, you would probably, um, her question was, could she ask for a grant on behalf of the University of Pittsburgh? It would probably need to be a joint thing. And we do have, you know, universities, people that are quite inexperienced that, that come in and want to do something. So it, it's always best if it's a partnership with, with experienced Wikipedians working with so people at a university. So if you, if you had people in the library department or in a gender studies department or where, or, or the medical area is what you're working on. meeting with, like, say, the medical librarian right. for um, the University of Pittsburgh, then why couldn't they apply for a grant to hire some medical students to add content? Because, because the Wikimedia Foundation does not pay for content to be created. That would not be allowed. They, they can pay for um, someone to organize events on campus to, you know, for editors to, to come to edit, but because of the way the, the government regulations exist, the only way that they can comply um, and not be put themselves in jeopardy is to not pay for content to be created. And to be real frank, the communities typically don't want Wikimedia Foundation paying for content to be created. We've had some negative experiences in the past when we kind of went in that direction a little bit. So typically that is not so something they would do. Be, it would have to be a women's health edit-a-thon sponsored by the medical school library? Yes, that would be great. They would, they would certainly, you know, pay for that. Okay. And, you know, and if, if, for example, if the, um, school wanted to pay like staff money for someone to you know like I'm trying to think because we do have visiting scholars you know and if and if that would develop into a paid position somewhere for I somebody a, right there's a budget. right so if that would actually happen you know there still could potentially be ways that Wikimedia Foundation could help support a person in that position without paying for them to create content I mean they may be able to do support for some of the training materials or some of the work to make it a shared thing because I think moving towards shared work, you know, between partner organizations, us and institutions is probably a lot of the future of our movement. So I think that would be certainly something they could support. You know, if the, uh, the staff position was funded by an institution, then Wikimedia Foundation could come in and, put, and provide other types of support. So does any other questions? And any other experiences with grants that anybody want, that they've done themselves that were related to? Um, the one question is sure. in, in receiving the funds, so let's say we get grant approval, uh, does it need to be done through a fiscal agency with 501c3 or are people being paid directly through a personal bank account? Where does okay, Wikimedia Foundation is expert at working on this. Not only, I mean, they do it all around the world and honestly, we, we figure out how to try to get our money to Iran, which is like tough. Because, <laughs> you know, we actually says we can't. So, I mean, so, um, so, so I'm not saying they do anything illegal, but, you know, they try really hard to get money to people that want to, su to support people. Um, they certainly don't do anything illegal, so please don't read it into what they do. <laughs> but, but um, so if you were wanting a small amount of money, like I'm getting, like my, my grant that I got is, does, actually doesn't have to do with diversity. It has to do with um, helping health topic experts write on Wikipedia, but I'm interested in gender, so I'll, of course, be, you know, including women's health in that, you know, checklist. But anyway, but, um, like, it's not that much money. It's, you know, it's like $6,000, and so it'll go to me in two payments. 
um, at the beginning, and it'll go, when I turn in my mid report, I'll get the second part of it, and it'll go directly into my bank account. They just wanna know my name, make sure um, I don't have anybody on the account that will use the money in a bad way, and very you know simple questions. If you're getting a lot of money, then they need something much more complicated than that. I mean, this will be all handled um, very pretty simply, um, but if you're getting you know larger amounts of money, potentially even the amount that you'll get for the conference, it, it probably will be handled a little bit differently. Yeah. You know how right how they give it to you, and they will um, you know what you know. I mean, they want receipts and everything like that for everyone, but they're going to want a different level of reporting for something. Yeah, yeah. James. Yeah, that, I was going to say that. So if, if you are really great on ideas, but really not into bookkeeping, <laughs> I mean, you have to do certain level of it. You have to keep the receipts. You have to manage that side of it. But if you aren't really wanting to, like, um, you know, handle that type of thing, then there are chapters who will, who will help you do that. So I definitely think DC has done this, I know, several times in the past. So does anybody else have any experiences they would like to talk about in terms of getting grants? Right, and they have, like, I mean, they'll hold Google Hangouts, the grants department will, and get on there and have a group of people on there who will talk about their ideas, and they'll help them, and then individually there'll be phone calls as well to help you work on your ideas. So, I mean, I, I, but he was speaking more along the lines of also um, people can help each other, and so I really feel like, you know, if we're really interested in gender and diversity, if we see an idea from a really new person that we feel like is not quite hitting the mark because they don't quite get our product, you know, Wikimedia movement exactly, but it's still kind of a good idea. We can go in there and help that idea be better, you know, and help it fit into our movement better. Plus, also, if we feel like they're going to fail because they don't know how to edit, they don't know how to hold edit-a-thons, maybe we can connect them with a, with a group of people in their vicinity that has those skills. And so we'll bring in new people, but at the same time, matching them up with that. So that's the kind of thing, if we take that interest, we can go and make, make them be better. The other thing is, is, is sitting on the grant committees. Um, these are volunteer um, committees, and you go through and you look at the grants, and whenever, the way I ended up kind of getting into the grant program, whenever our largest grant program that gives out, I think it was gonna give out like $8 million to the largest chapters, like no women volunteered to be on that committee. It was gonna be, it's actually the planning committee for the, to create this new funding system. And so a friend of mine heard about that and said, you cannot form this committee without a woman on it. I mean, it just shows you the power imbalance, right? And so they were like, who would be, who would go on this committee this quick? We're starting it like tomorrow. And they summoned and said, well, ask Sydney. She'll see if she'll do it. So I did, and actually it just changed, it changed a lot of things for me. I mean, I really started seeing how the big chapters really were not necessarily focused on gender. And me being there in the room and asking as we're discussing, you know, grants for hundreds of thousands of dollars, 
but where are they working on gender? They have no gender, you know, they have no males on their, I mean, only males on their, on their board and that kind of thing. And just having people in the room saying that kind of thing does change things. Because the people that I'm working with, that were sitting there with me, they were not sexist people. But it was not their priority. It was my priority. So people who are interested in diversity, join those committees, speak out, say that you feel like that we should be grading on diversity whenever we, we get, you know, ask questions on talk pages. You know, how is this going to improve the diversity in the Wikimedia movement? Even if it's not something related to diversity, maybe they could change it so it would be more related to diversity. So join those committees, look at grants that are being put up, and give your opinions about um, how we can improve um, diversity through that, through that process. Um, I, I honestly, it's, it's, uh, I, I honestly can't give you that number. I'm really sorry. I can't. I just don't have it in front of me right now. I don't want him to speak about what it is. But it, the thing is, like, they don't typically give away all the money because the ideas are not, um, you know, appropriate. I mean, so it's not as if there's a lack of money <laughs> that, that we're really constrained, to be real honest, okay? So it's, it's more of an issue that people... Are, are putting up ideas that don't seem to match our movement very well. They're not. Do you, do you know, Alex? Um, all but one of our programs was uh, underutilized. Yeah. Last, uh, last year, we had a Yeah, and, and, and if we start bumping into those things and then we, as a movement, want more money put in that, then that's something we can send that message. We want, you know, fun, more fundraising for more money. So, so I don't think we should let that stop us, you know, in terms of coming forward and asking for money. You're welcome. So if there's no more questions, then I think then we'll just, I'll leave you all to, oh, we have one more question. For what, for what purpose? I, I think that is possible. Okay, that would be in the realm of possible. I think things like that have been done before. I am not telling you that would get approved if you put it in. You know, I can't promise you that at all. But I do think purchasing equipment to use for training is something that has happened in the past in, 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 in environments that are um, where there is underrepresented. I mean, where, where they don't have it. You know, obviously you can't make something if you don't have the, if you can't do edit-a-thons if no one has laptops, right? <laughs> so, um, so yes, I think it's a possibility. I can't tell you whether or not they would fund it from that particular circumstance or not, though. Right. I mean, I, I've seen funding for things like um, bike rental for people that were born on bike treks. I've seen funding for um, things like um, 
camping equipment where people were going to be going taking you know images in places where there weren't hotels you know and they were they wanted to take a lot of people and they didn't own tents and they did the cost analysis and decided buying it because they were going to go do it year after year made more sense so they you know paid for camping equipment to do that so i mean you know people are thinking of creative ideas and it actually is money savings you know to do that actually and so I think you should not be afraid to put up ideas. I mean, I can't tell you they're going to be approved, but it's, it's, there are possibilities that do exist. Uh-huh. Are there any sample guidelines uh, that will show what categories have been funded for an editor fund? Um, I, I, I don't, I mean, there are, I mean, I could show you, you know, examples, you know, of that. Um, you know, they do exist. It's all transparent. If you go to, um, you know, Meta is where this is. The grants are put in. You can go and look. Um, so you really are you going to show her, Alex? I'm not sure. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but um, yes, I mean that is a great way of trying to understand is to look to see what people have done before. That it's, it seemed to get a pretty quick response. And if your idea is very similar, then probably is not going to. You shouldn't sweat it too much. And um, it would probably work, you know, if you want ideas about, like, them paying for, uh, you know, food or Wi-Fi or, you know, whatever you need or, or space for your edit-a-thon. Some pe pe people live in cities where it's really difficult to get free space, you know, that can actually be paid for at times. So, you know, those types of things, you look at how people wrote it up, how they justified it, how they explained it, and that could help make it, you know, work. So if there's no more questions, then I think we'll call this to a halt, and I'll be glad to help you all. Just while we're all in the same room, I wanted to make a very brief announcement. I see from Twitter that uh, Dominic is uh, doing his part to close the gender gap, and has written an article on... Let, uh, wi is a little slow, sorry. The Interdepartmental Committee on the Status of Women, um, founded by Kennedy in 1963. So there's no excuse for the rest of us not to be doing the same thing while we're here this weekend. So uh, we're going to be breaking until, let me pull up the schedule, until 3.30. And um, that'll be our final session. We'll be in the um, presidential rooms upstairs. We have two sessions going on in the Jefferson and Washington room, and if anyone wants to do any unconference things, the Adams and Madison rooms are open. So um, on behalf of uh, the committee DC, thank you for coming. So and at that point, the conference is done. Is there any yes. uh, activity people that they can buy? Um, I guess we can all just kind of spontaneously congregate in the lobby out there next to the check-in table. Because the, uh, I believe the archives will still be open for a little bit. And so we can kind of figure out where we're going for um, dinner or say your goodbyes and head to the airport. But while we are all here together, thank you for attending the uh, Wikimedia Diversity Conference. And I hope you've all found it as illuminating and inspiring as I have. So. <laughs>